Hello, my name is Dr. Booten Foster. I'm a primary care physician and associate professor of medicine at Downstate Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York. And today I'd like to discuss some helpful facts that can help primary care providers when taking care of their patients who have both chronic kidney disease and gout. Over 8 million people in the U.S. alone are living with gout. Some people have a hereditary condition that causes hyperuricemia and increases the risk of gout. However, the most common medical risk factors for gout remain obesity, hypertension, and chronic kidney disease. CKD is both an independent risk factor for gout and a consequence of gout. The hyperuricemia associated with gout can impair kidney function leading to CKD, and in patients who already have CKD, gout can cause renal function to decline. The most common risk factors for gout, such as obesity and hypertension, are also risks for CKD. Almost 40% of patients with gout have CKD. For patients with gout, who haven't been diagnosed with CKD, it is important for providers to check their GFR and their urinary albumin to creatinine ratio. It is also important for providers to be aware of any signs of gout, such as elevated serum uric acid, painful, red, or swollen joints. The same medications that are used to treat patients with gout and CKD are also used to treat patients with gout who do not have CKD. However, special considerations must be taken when caring for patients with both gout and CKD. It's also important for primary care providers to be aware that patients with both CKD and gout are at risk for more adverse and serious drug reactions. Gout can also cause other conditions such as renal nephrolithiasis. As a primary care provider, you are likely to take care of patients with both gout and CKD which makes your role critical in preserving your patient's kidneys. Colchicine is one option for acute gout. However, caution must be taken when starting colchicine in patients with CKD. Lower doses are recommended in moderate to severe CKD. For patients on dialysis, a one-time dose of 0.6 milligrams is recommended and should not be repeated more than once every two weeks. In CKD patients, even low doses of colchicine can result in neuromyopathy and bone marrow suppression. CKD patients who are taking antibiotics such as clarithromycin, ketoconazole, or cyclosporine are at increased risk of fatal toxic drug interactions. While on colchicine, CKD patients should be monitored for leukopenia, dysfunction of the liver, and neuropathy. In treating patients with an acute gout attack, corticosteroids can also be used as an alternative choice for patients who have CKD. The American College of Rheumatology recommends prednisone at 0.5 milligrams per kilogram for two to five days, then tapering off over seven to 10 days. And it's important to closely monitor blood glucose in patients with diabetes who are being started on corticosteroids for gout. NSAIDs can significantly worsen renal function and should be avoided in patients with CKD. When treating chronic gouts, the most commonly used xanthine oxidase inhibitors are allopurinol and febuxostat. When prescribing allopurinol to patients with CKD, the recommended starting dose is 100 milligrams per day, which can be increased to 300 milligrams per day or greater with careful monitoring. The American College of Rheumatology recommends starting at a lower dose and titrating up until target serum urate is achieved. The dose of allopurinol should be titrated every two to five weeks based on serum uric acid levels and clinical response. For patients with CKD, stage four or greater, allopurinol is not recommended. The use of allopurinol should be closely monitored. Allopurinol can cause a rare but serious hypersensitivity reaction known as allopurinol hypersensitivity syndrome, or AHS. This syndrome is similar to Stevens-Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis. It can cause eosinophilia, vasculitis, and serious end-organ damage. 
The combination of thiazides and CKD significantly increases the risk of AHS. Physicians should monitor for rash, pruritus, transaminitis, or eosinophilia. Fabuxostat does not require renal dosing in mild to moderate kidney disease. The usual starting dose is 40 milligrams per day with a maximum of 80 milligrams per day. The use of fabuxostat in patients with stage 4 or greater CKD is generally not recommended because of a lack of sufficient evidence. For patients who do not respond to monotherapy with either allopurinol or fabuxostat or who have had an adverse reaction to either medication, a uricosuric agent can be used. Probenazid is the first choice for uricosurics. However, it is not recommended for patients with creatinine clearance less than 50 milliliters per minute, or in patients with a history of nephrolithiasis. As with all patients with CKD, lifestyle modification is key, especially for patients with gout. These modifications include dietary modifications, staying well hydrated, having regular physical activity, smoking cessation, reducing certain foods such as alcohol, meats, organ meats, shellfish, and foods or beverages sweetened with high fructose corn syrup. It is also important to monitor medication use in patients with gout such as diuretics, in particular, loop and thiazide diuretics, beta blockers, low-dose aspirin, as well as several other medications that are shown here. So here are some important take-home points. Gout and CKD can occur in the same patient. In the patient with gout, monitor for CKD. In patients with CKD stage two to five with hyperuricemia and a history of acute gout, the American College of Rheumatology recommends initiating uric acid lowering therapy. When using medications such as colchicine, allopurinol, or probenazid, start at a lower dose. Monitor closely for adverse drug reactions. And remember, NSAID should be avoided. Remember to promote dietary modifications and weight loss. We've covered a lot of information here today, but one of the most important things is to remember that as a primary care provider, you play a vital role in the lives of patients with CKD. We thank you for listening to this program.